Hi there, Graham here with the first part of the rebuild on our all steel 2.3 race Pinto. So what we have here is a fresh 205 Brock, newly bored to 93mm. Sitting in it is one of the original pistons. It might get a new set or it might just get the original damaged one replaced, but for the moment I've really used one of the old ones. Block's been faced and the good thing is that with the engine the TDC, the deck height is actually the same as the old one. So I don't need to adjust piston height or conrod length. Block itself is nothing remarkable, other than the 205 block. If I flip it round a bit, we've got a new auxiliary bearing in the end. Prior to fitting your core plug, you want a nice clean hole, but this engine, this block's been acid dipped, so it's lovely and clean inside. You can just bang them in dry, but they're prone to weep if you do. It's not the end of the world, they usually seal themselves up, but I always install them with a small amount of Loctite, or seal them. We take our core plug, drop it in the hole, socket, and a sharp blow with a hammer and drive it in. This one's quite tight. Normal production car engine, you'd stop there, but in this instance, we've got the added security of the little screws and the washers. And that is just enough to make sure with the vibrations and shocks from racing, that core plug can't walk its way out. Here we've got the crank. The crank's been away, it's had a polish, it's still on standard size. We've given it a little bit more clearance than before, i.e. bearing to crank pin clearance. We'll flow a little bit more oil through there and should keep the crank slightly cooler because we notice one or the two of the bearing journals were looking like they've been a little bit warm. But the big thing with the stroker cranks, the con rods will hit the block. And as it rotates, you can see it gets really close to the block. In actual fact, they actually hit. So if you look at the block there, you've had to relieve the block to give clearance for the rod to clear. So the block is now clearanced. That one piston has been in all of them. So we know it all rotates lovely so we can move on to the next stage. While I'm here, I'll give a demonstration on checking bearing clearances. Now you can get all really clever with micrometers, measure cranks, internal mics, measure the inner diameter, the caps and things. Particularly for an amateur, a brilliant thing is a bearing clearance check with plastic gauge. It's dead simple. You don't need to know what sizes things actually are, but you need to know the gap. I'm gonna get a spanner, socket under that cap and show you how to check a clearance with plastic gauge. And we're going to take a little strip of the plastic gauge material itself, which is like a soft waxy substance, lay it across the crank journal, it sits there. Take your cap with the bearing, clean, dry, drop the cap on, we'll give it a little tap of the hammer to seat it. And you would normally torque the cap down to the correct torque. Now that's close enough to the correct torque, it will, it will be fine, but if this was for real, you would use the actual torque setting. Now making sure you do not move the crank, once torqued up, you undo your bolts, take the cap off, and your little strip of wax is now a wide strip. And in the packet of plastic gauge, there's a little chart. Metric one side, imperial the other. You then take it and you use it to read the size and the clearance. Between that bearing and the crank, it's two and a half thou. It's not four thou, it's not three thou, it's not two thou. It's definitely not one and a half, two and a half. And that's actually told us the clearance between the bearing and a crank pin without actually using any measuring tools. And it's brilliant for just double checking because it's quick and easy. Finally, for block preparation for the moment, off camera, we removed the oil filter adapter with a die grinder and a burr. We radiused where the drilling meets the main oil gallery to improve oil flow because there's a bit of a mismatch. One gallery's there and the other one's a bit above. By radiusing and smoothing the entry between the two, we should improve oil flow to the block therefore oil flow to the crankshaft, helping keep the bearings cool. When we stripped the engine, the bearings were in remarkably good condition, but we could see the crank had been a little bit warm. Moving forward, we're gonna try and share as much of this rebuild with you guys as we can. Ultimately, we should be showing this engine completed, run up on our dyno on both carburetors and injection, it being finally dialed in, complete with its gearbox on a rolling road. If you missed part one of this, where this engine uh, disintegrated in spectacular fashion, Part one is here. If you want to make sure you don't miss the upcoming episodes, you know what to do. Like, click, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Catch you later, guys.